प्लीज वेलकम करूँ जी रीडेवलपमेंट इज ए सब्जेक्ट विच विल ऑलवेज कंटिन्यू टू बी लाइव एटलीस्ट फॉर द डिटेल्स नॉट फॉर द रीजन दैट इट इज अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स सब्जेक्ट बट फॉर द रीजन दैट देर आर सो मेनी स्टेक होल्डर्स एंड टू माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग मोर स्टेक होल्डर्स आर डिसेप्टिव देन ट्रांसपेरेंट When I speak in such gatherings, I am not referring to any particular individual or any class of stakeholders. But if you see my writings, writings spread over more than ten years in Times Property, DN, etc., or in professional magazines, I have been quite blunt in respect of whether a particular project of redevelopment has probability to succeed or not. The answer comes no for the reason that. Even when the market was in its prime in 2005, 10, etc., which was a landowner's market, and today, in fact, I was addressing a gathering of architects in Mumbai, post rera, post GST, post demonetization, and if nothing was left out, post COVID, all these were big blows to the real estate industry. Why big blows? Because all Of them together, and each of them singularly affected on account of money on which real estate industry has been thriving. Up to date, I am little going on the macro level. Then I will come to the micros. Up to date, the difference between the advanced countries, we say, is the developing countries. India is a developing country still, has always been there. Funds will go on flowing from that side to this side for the simple reason that because of the lack of or inadequacy of social security systems in the developing countries, the interest rates on deposits will continue to be higher in developing countries than what it is in the developed country. And if the deposit rates are higher, then by the required spread in commerce, you will appreciate that the lending rates are also higher. And when lending rates are higher, the funds get attracted. This is a simple economy. But if you see the recent developments, particularly post-COVID, now in the US, the rates have risen to five percent and above. Japan was in the negative interest rate territory. Now it has entered into positive. So the gap between rates over there and over here was quite wide earlier. Is now reducing. Secondly, in the and this is where micro is also involved in the state like Maharashtra because of lot of politics, every government was always eager to earn more and more in the shortest possible time. So how imagine the scheme scale? You pay me today, even though less. Start your project. So there is a big queue of projects, and that is all supply in offering. Whether these projects will ultimately culminate into reality or not, but the hard reality is funds are blocked. Today's real estate market is suffering because of two reasons, and I will be pleased to entertain a new view on any of the aspects I am speaking on. The real estate market is suffering. For two reasons, one is liquidity funds, and second is uncertainty of sale. The reports which you are seeing in the newspapers are not so believable. I have written many times that you will always find in the newspapers prices are rising. Now is the time to buy. Show me a single newspaper report. In last fifty years or twenty years also, where some newspaper wrote, "Today is not the right time to buy. Tomorrow will be better." Because media writes what it under what it understands. The best example I tell you in thousands of reports in newspapers on Rera, you will find the term escrow account. I have written the book on Rera All India Basis, and the publisher is none other than the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. You show me the term "resto" in the law. By common sense, also, if you understand, 
escrow is an account to be operated by two. Both the parties to the transaction in RERA. Who operates the bank account? Developer only. So it is not an escrow account. Coming back to taking all these macros into account, my view about real estate market in Mumbai today is that presently there is undercurrent, which is a good one. But we are at the crossroads. For the biggest reason that before 10 years I was buying a property for the reason that there was lot of possible appreciation. Today whether I, I should buy or not is a question mark for me. Then let me give you another example friends. Whether you take before 20 years or now. If your budget is 3 crores, you put 3 crores in the bank at bank fixed deposit. Fixed deposit is the lowest rate of interest, 8% I should count, so on 3 crores it will turn to be 24 lakhs, monthly I get 2 lakhs, if I buy this flat it is 3 crores, if I take on rent it is around 1 lakh only. So out of 24 lakhs interest, I am saying saving 12 lakhs. This is not today friends, this was earlier also. Still I was buying the flat, why? Because within 5 years, it will become double. Appreciation was the main factor. Today, that appreciation is either not there or it is a very really slow rate. And still, the government is to gather momentum, the central government here. Once the modal renting law is operative, then renting become, will become easier. Today also in Maharashtra it is not so difficult because of the competent authority assuring me that if it is a residential property, eviction of the tenant, eviction of the licensee, not tenant, eviction of the licensee within six months plus penalties upon me. But once the modern renting law comes out, renting will become further easy. So slowly, slowly, the country is travelling towards advanced countries wherein more flats are higher than purchase. Today's new rich crowd also wants mobility because of their job profiles. So assurance about appreciation is reducing day by day. In this market very rightly post some of the episodes I told you Today the market is a developer's market. 2000 or say 1995 to 2012 was a landowner's market. There is one project and so many developers will be in queue. Today, developer is deciding whether he wants to enter this project. This difference is going to play a lot of role. The topic given to me is process of redevelopment, which I will give a passing reference because most of the audience attending here is by and large aware about the sequence of redevelopment, so not to spend time. But suffice to say that feasibility, thereafter tendering, appointment, maybe an appointment letter, maybe an LOI only, maybe MOU also, depending upon facts of the case, depending upon whether there are contingencies to be resolved before one can enter the roadmap of redevelopment. So, visibility, tendering, appointment or MOU, thereafter development agreement individual agreement, coupled with bank guarantee, rating of the TDR purchase agreements and thereafter rating of the construction documents. This may be termed as a combination for the role of PMC also. Whether good documentation succeeds in this market or not, I will be pleased to hear questions in between also. 
whether a good documentation succeeds in this market or no, may be the first question in my consideration. The good documents are less likely to succeed in this market than fake. Then less likely to succeed than fake. Why? Because there is lot of stereotype. ये ऐसा ही होता है। The most interested section, stakeholder, that is members, landowners, lessees, tenants, who should be highly cautious, is unfortunately most casual. I must have addressed more than 4,000 meetings. I headed the India Economy Group also post COVID, but I always say that in India, the interested persons are most vulnerable. They are fond of becoming a part of mob. Two examples I give you. After passing a general remark that more people buy vegetables at 200 rupees by lot of scrutiny, but they sign the property documents without reading. May English nahi samajta. Mere dar mein kaafi educated hai, lekin mere liye convenient hai, mere English nahi samajta. Mere bada likha nahi hai. मेरे पास से रिलेटिव्स पढ़े लिखे आई डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू इवन इंडल्ज इन टू एन एक्सरसाइज इट इफ आई रीड द सेम डॉक्यूमेंट थ्री टू फोर टाइम्स एवरी टाइम आई विल अंडरस्टैंड समथिंग मोर एवरी टाइम मोर क्वेश्चन मे एराइज इन माई माइंड इवन इफ आई एम ए वेरी वेल फेलो बट आई प्रिफर टू फॉलो अदर्स So what happens in a typical redevelopment of a cooperative society? There are allies, not necessarily honest. There are allies, say five percent. There are other allies who are able to see the designs, who are able to see the maneuvering. Say two percent, then rest ninety to ninety three percent would like to throw their weight here and not here. So thereafter, you see all the judgments of Bombay High Court. Majority is the king. Yes, majority has a right to decide, but does the majority decide by forcefulness? They do not remain even neutral. Also, who don't understand? They decide their side, which is far more convenient and where they don't have to do anything. So, no required to do anything is the most convenient position. I was writing in newspapers very categorically. That there are Supreme Court judgments, not related to redevelopment, but related to goodwill, sale of goodwill. But those judgments are applicable to redevelopment, and tax can be zero. Nobody believes me. In fact, that is my destiny also. That when I write for the first time, it's not believable. So many books were being sold in the market. How to calculate tax? By so many free seminar walas. When the judgment came, it was an eye opener. It was published in all the top newspapers of the country. Then also many professors had opted new government law, but they were allowed to. It did not change. Why did not change? Because in the North Block, I can claim I must have visited North Block hundred times. In the Rada enactment also, I had a good liaison with them. Yet, 
in the nose blow mumbai is not a big pocket of money then you must have seen in idsc more black money came out from hyderabad that really statistics show me so low remain as it was they also i have said categorically that still by this judgment also there is no law whether redevelopment is feasible or not so it all depends upon how the documents are structured how the scheme of redevelopment is conceived how it is documented and very rightly so for the reason that vimal rajan mutha a celebrated supreme court judgment universally applicable in india any transaction or set of transactions redevelopment is a set of transactions is embodied in a document then before you analyze the tax implications of these transactions you must read and analyze the document interpretation of documents is also a question of law this is the purport of the judgment and therefore after i succeeded in the judgment of sailaja which bombay high court followed in many many cases of society redevelopment and granted zero taxation but there were many societies which were taxed also even after the judgment because depending upon how the set of development agreements were structured another view point when i mentioned in half page of times property around 2010 that if the development agreement is tempered then the pursuant individual agreement will not require any stamp duty very few developers took a call and we could register their individual agreements on 100 or 200 rupees stamp duty but most of them were paid now bombay high court has given the same judgment which before 15 years i wrote in that stop there no stamp duty on individual agreements you read my article at a page quite celebrated even uh, nursing home at maharashtra to kabir sam so my article that it is the name of the article was home that works that use of the entire residential premises i mean entire not part use of the entire residential premises by a professional is not a change of user at all and not only that but it does not require anyone's permission whatsoever all our offices are in residential premises only we have never applied for any change of user and so many ca so many advocates have benefited of our services even in cases where municipal corporation initiated prosecution ultimately they were acquitted coming to the when i say that uh, no tax no tax on redevelopment i meant complete no taxation whether on society or on individual members but that is one part of the development i am going to speak the subsequent part of developments and where we stand today when it comes to documentation professor is not a commerce okay i will give you one example that uh, west bengal government in the definition of the shop and establishment inserted the term legal practitioner that legal practitioner also will be a show kolkata so high court struck down the amendment you can't treat profession as a friend this happens let me claim also i must say address many many all india commissions of income tax this thing i am invited to speak on real estate laws but the moment i enter into succession laws huas and henry amendment more question starts on get a real view to somewhere so so today we are on redevelopment when it comes to redevelopment documentation 
MOU, I gave you only an example. Take the best example, Akbar Bhai very rightly referred, Mada Clothes. Most of the Mada societies are on land of Mada. Right? In many cases, lease also not done. Mada is the owner. Lease will be done afterwards. Lease will be done after, after a development. Right? Now, friends, uh, one has to go to the roots of the law. India has concept of dual ownership. This is very interesting. Meaning that land can be owned by A and on this land the building of B can come. B will be owner of the building. Flat owners in the B will be owners. They will not be owner of the land. Right? So all those BNC lands, Mara lands are in that territory. So if the Mara is the owner or say if you go to we are doing one project there also in Avadala to El Africa state, BNC land. All are BNC tenants. Now it will go under redevelopment. So ultimately they will get ownership. So you appreciate that today in Mara land you are not the owner of the land. In BNC tenancy, you are not the owner of the land. Redevelopment is a subject of land, not a building. Building is a liability there. Okay. If somebody comes to me and I am a developer, I will remove the building, I will be more receptive for him. And there lies sex issues also. That government and department was wrong. That he has transferred the flat. Mm -hmm. Developer would say, where he has transferred, it has never reached to me. Okay, so coming back to these circumstances where ultimately conveyance may happen, may not happen, where there are litigations on the land, so unless the litigations are removed, conveyance may not happen, and whether you take BMC as a regulator or MARA as a regulator, in local authorities, they will never see your documents. They are concerned property card is the name And very rightly, because they can't be adjudicators of law. The one who produces property card is the owner of the land. So the stop of property card becoming your name in your name may be little longer. So you enter into MOU. That only if the appointed developer is able to achieve this in the decided time framework or extended time framework, then we will go to development agreement. Till that time it is a contingency which needs to be resolved first and therefore the case of MOU. The fundamental of documentation is that if one of the parties is relaxed after appointment, then it is very, very dangerous for the other side. And this is happening in redevelopment in more cases than not. The documents of redevelopment must be drafted by the landowners. Even though technically developer is a purchaser of the development rights, but in reality, once the building, uh, once the property is vacated, the landowners are at the mercy of the developer. And lot of credit would go to the judiciary also. And I am very blunt about it. You go to any courtroom in the Bombay High Court, in a day generally one day development matter will come. And on behalf of the developer, you will see out of the listed top council somebody will get up. The fees are anywhere about 2 lakhs per day, up to 10 lakhs also. And here stands for the common man. Unfortunately, a professional cannot be common, but he is a common advocate. My friend judges also, when they come to my office, I discuss with them. 
सर जुडिशरी में ऐसा है कि वो आदमी महाभारत एक घंटा तक बोलेगा जब डिस्टर्ब नहीं करेगा सो इफ यू थिंक दैट टू गेट इंप्लीमेंटेड दिस टर्म आई हैव नो अदर वे बट टू गो टू कोर्ट देन यू शुड थिंक दैट यू नो अदर वे बट टू पनिश योर से there are so many examples more examples in which in mumbai your threat is exactly 20 to 25 square feet less and the development element will invariably contain a clause before taking possession of the newly constructed premises the existing members shall be entitled to a inspection of the threat now what is section he is tired if he is an activist like me his family members are tired they will tell 2025 baad mein pehle possession le lo and when the matter goes to court it runs a lot and then the court says if he is lucky his square feet are 25 less you pay market price of the 25 All 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 and cry all over these details. Mm-hmm. today also whether it is Bandra or Borivali. The stamp duty rates are lower than the real market price. Am I right or not? In most of the areas. So he will get stamp duty. In other country, he would have been behind the bars, cheating for time. So in this kind of situation. litigation becoming at the mercy of this slow moving and costly judicial system one is not able to just be man in mood to one is not able to get many terms implemented to court of law therefore in my most of the writings you will find the term iron clad documentation what do i mean by iron clad that if i visualize my questions and my questions are answered without taking recourse to the court of law and my questions are answered in a manner that defaulter will suffer more then it is an iron clad document so he will not default take the reverse of this what i exam what example i just now spoke if if i write in my development agreement that at the end of every slab Like first slave, second slave, third slave. The engineer actually it should be engineer, but people in this architect, but what sort of work? The PMC will take measurement of the areas of the threads. So his thread is three zero three. First slave is asked. Measurement will be taken. If it is less than agreed, the Arbitration, whatsoever you want to do, will be done there only. And unless he rectifies, he will not be entitled to proceed further. And the time of rectification will not enable him any extension because he is rectifying his own default. This is not too much of a right thing. This is taking care of the members' interest, but that is what is not liked by the other lobby. Because they enter into an agreement, total FSI is Akbar by say, say four point zero five. Out of that, existing members two and two point five zero five. This is done. Thereafter, there are all the manipulations. How not to give this to? More often than not, you will read a clause in the development agreement. There can be two percent variation plus or minus. I have argued. So show me one project where you give more to five or two percent. Show me one project where by mistake you give more. You will always give less. But we allow your market practice, but we will put this clause that ultimately the thirty-five thousand men for the members will be used for members only. If somewhere it is two percent less, somewhere it will have to be more also. Yet, a portion of thirty-five thousand will not get transferred over here. He said earlier, "You must have the imagination where rooms are going. You must have the knowledge where rooms are going. 
then you must have appropriate gloves. Why appropriate gloves? Because if you breathe, breathe in too much, this is developer's market, he will run away. The PNC will be blamed by the society. He is unable to. So, you must have appropriate gloves in which you are applying the club without harming him. And more importantly, because before I go to specific document, today also in Indian market, the unwritten rule of the developers continue. After taking over the project, if the project is likely to suffer, suffer adversities, so you have to sit in front of me. Now, see what is happening. If the project is going to turn out to be more profitable, your telephones will not be lifted. So, every loss attributable to you and every profit attributable to him, you are operating in this market. And those who come under the talks of this to sign the document, they are also high sufferers because they think I will come in future. Little only comes and they go on signing documents, ultimately I have seen. They start repenting. So, signature vapis lete au jo milaye vapis lete au lete no possible no. So, you are traveling the road me which is full of white color wrongs. And in this scenario, if you are careful, then only you will be able to navigate your redevelopment successfully. When it comes to development agreement, the specifics which should be noted are, you are aware that hardship compensation, rental and so on and so forth. And as Akbar Bhai said, 30 months advance rent, if not possible, at least take the checks. Because checks along with development agreement, along with individual agreement, can very well go under 138. Provided you use the check within the limitation time of 3 months of the check. Individual agreement, I have written a lot, I give the most importance for the reason that when something wrong goes, it is very difficult many a times to assemble the majority. Majority itself is quite deceptive because it is more based on perception than realities. So, and, and it is not necessary also that those who are in the management will continue to be management. You go to deputy registrar's office, you will find many redevelopments initiated. Committee has now started thinking much. Earlier committee was trusting. So, administrator comes. The price of an administrator is not so high. So today's management may not be tomorrow's management. There lies the importance of individual agreement. That individual agreement should be so much iron clay that to ensure his own right, he is not dependent upon the majority. At the same time, I can tell you, our topmost builder, who is quite in line like nowadays, IP also came. His solicitor came to my office. He said, yeah, we are afraid of these clauses. Any member will stop the redevelopment. I said, sir, no. You see the subsidy clauses. A member will have a right to his new flat only. He will not be able to stop your redevelopment. That can be done by society only. So we have to be balanced enough then we have to be vigilant enough to protect the rights of individual members. Bank guarantee. So far, you take PSU banks, you take private banks, no bank has a structured bank guarantee for the redevelopment. Am I right? They are all performance guarantees. We have audited many years banks. What is this performance guarantee? I have supplied in goods. He has given me bank guarantee. I have under, undertaken to construct a bridge. I have given bank guarantee. These are all performance guarantees. They are not applicable to pre-development kind of 
situations. So the importance of drafting is the Indian thing. And you can't leave it to the developer because you are protecting your interest. Your bank guarantee should be such which is really untouchable. Because bank is another organization. If you want to enter the bank guarantee and if developer finds out some flaws in the bank guarantee, his advocate will give a notice. This can't be untouched. You see this condition, you see this condition and banks are always easy going. After dispute is, we will not do anything. Our court may charge. Very easy answer. So your bank guarantee should be drafted in such a meticulous manner that no ifs and buts are involved for investment or bank guarantee. And even then, friends, let me tell you, by and large, societies are very good people. They don't enter the bank guarantee, even if the project is delayed. They see what are the reasons. Is it still doable project is doing? Societies are more than eager to let go. But the weapon should be there in your hands so that you may you may impose new conditions, new conditions also, and therefore the importance of drafting the drafting the main guarantee. If TDR is purchased, he will certainly purchase TDR. He will tell you also that this is for your society. But here is a PDR and here is a company share certificate in physical environment. They are both transferable by delivery and endorsement. So unless that PDR is loaded on the records of the BMC or MADA as the case may be, in the name of your society, just showing PDR I purchased for you, is like telling the child I just find a rupee notice for you and put it in my pocket. So the thing which is legally deliverable by endorsement is a bearer document, bearer instrument, unless it is loaded in the record of the concerned local authority, it does not become your entitlement. Therefore, we need to vouch the documentation also. Going further, like uh, income tax, the stamp duty authorities also are very, very easy going. If something wrong happens, property tax not paid by the developer, under construction tax not paid by the developer, stamp duty on TDR not paid by the developer, they will attach your property because that is easy. Therefore, the need for you to vet the documentation of TDR whether it is properly stamped or not stamped. They are on GST, still it is on Supreme Court, the matter is. Now, let me give a, in fact, uh, I could have brought my PPT, but it is made of two and a half hours. So, I, uh, Akbar Bhai told me, Tarun Bhai, Hala Ganda Bolnai. Coming to income tax, after that, Sailor's decision, and after that, you know, lot of uh, happening on the redevelopment, ultimately government amended the law by Finance Act 2023, wherein Section 55 was amended, by which the Sailaja judgment now was non-operative. That protection is gone. So once again, there are so many articles. Nowadays, WhatsApp is the biggest newspaper. So so many articles by professional, how to calculate tax, it will be this much. And I have written two lines on my Facebook page. Still, it can be zero taxable. It can be still tax friendly. But in between, the law got changed on development has remained in 2017. Effective from 1st April 2017, government introduced Section 5, Section 45, Subsection 5A, 5 capital A, where the law is only with reference to individuals and HUFs, not other categories of SSCs, wherein 
the government has postponed the income tax in respect of registered development agreements in which the landowners, that is member society member also, would be receiving new premises, whether new flat or new shop or new office, anything. Earlier you had all the judgments starting from Bombay High Court, Chatribud, Vartada, Sapadia, 260 IPR 491, that when the development agreement is signed, the property rights are transferred, the development rights are transferred, so taxation arises then and there only. After this 45-5A, the taxation was postponed. That now, in respect of this new flat, your taxation happens at the time of you are getting possession based on OC. So till that time, but there is a bigger threat. Why bigger threat? Because their taxation is happening at the stamp duty valuation of your new flat. Take the example, today your valuation of the flat is 2 crores, old flat. After completion, the new flat may be priced at 4 crores. So, income tax will be payable on that 4 lakhs. Capital gains to be calculated. Cost minus. Cost is not 2 lakhs. Cost is not 2 crores. It is half less. Because today's price is 2 crores. Your purchase value was 5 earlier. And now indexation has gone. Indexation has come back only in limited manner where option has been given by virtue of grandfathering provision which is by way of an amendment. So, it is a trade. If you go into that, ultimately you will meet the bigger tax liability. And if you sell it on the day without taking possession, then on the date of sale, that taxation will arise. Therefore, how to remain away from 45 how to remain away from this new amendment? Earlier also, now also, there was no formula. It was all dependent upon taking entire income tax law together and, re and designing the structure of your development in the document in a manner that taxation is friendly. By friendly taxation, it should be nil or it should be minimum. By friendly taxation, it should happen as late as possible. And it is still possible to keep the entire income tax on redevelopment at zero level also. GST has become a bigger problem and bigger dream for the government. World over indirect taxation is a bigger income for the government than the direct taxation. Uh, I partly heard you. Can, can you repeat? Uh, you see, nobody has said it is not a transfer. Even when Sailaja judgment came, the argument was not it is not a transfer. Okay. So it is not a transfer was never a theory. Earlier in the case of Goodwill also you had two judgments if you are a professional, Godavi Sugar Mills and A. R. Krishnamurthy, both were Supreme Court. Godavi applied to bonus shares. Mere paas ek share tha, dusra free of charge aaya. What about valuation? Here yeah, Krishnamurthy applied to renewable property transactions. You know, that I had bunch of pro property rights out of which I transfer only development rights. So no transfer was never a case. Okay. That answer you. That that can be, you know, that is a very you know complex subject, but yes, it is a capital receipt. It is a case of transfer and still a capital risk. GST, I was trying to touch upon. In the notifications of 2019, the government has effectively removed GST 
on the land owners in redevelopment. By transferring the TSC liability upon the developer. And that also under a reverse charge mechanism where developer is not so much affected as far as his sale of under construction flats is concerned. So that is not a worry of the societies. The second part is a worry of the societies, that is members. And uh, I also know that you may concur with my view that uh, builders know whether literate or not, but they know what to write and what not to write. Chara tak abadu mein possible hai tak aap sign kar do. And most often the language is very offending because it sweetly comes to you, trust me. It never comes, I will trust you. So, many of the documents are silent also on GST. When the time of repossession comes, you are told, you give this much GST, then I will be able to give you credit. Fortunately, the affordable government is quite expanding and expanding. So now in Mumbai it is 60, 60 square meters. So 60 square meters means around 660 square feet. And by then it may be 680 also. So if it is affordable, it is hardly an issue, only one person. But if it is not affordable, then it is 5%. Now, you see what is happening is that whether judiciary is independent or not is a multi-million question nowadays. At least in last 20 years. There are so many judgment friends <coughs> where blatantly the amendment, the new provisions are invalid, but courts have refrained from pronouncing them as invalid. You find today an amendment effective from 1961 and it is valid. You find an amendment if you are a student of taxation because taxation is the most happening law. When 50C came, 50C came along with Mr. Chandra Sekhar Prabhu, who is a, who was a MADA chairman. And I was addressing a meeting in a, some chair of the Marriott or any five star. In the gathering, I say that in 50C, assessing officer may refer that will have to be interpreted by the courts as shall refer. The term may will have to be interpreted as shall only. It can't be made. And if you see the judgments afterwards, all are saying shell. At that time it had not become law. It was a bill. Bill was yet to be enacted. So these kinds of arguments you find in our income tax law only. Where daily you get hundreds and hundreds of judgments, where coma here and there also gives little bit of interpretation. So what is happening in GST is all the dealings started by Bombay High Court when Mr. Chandra Chul, now the Supreme Court judge, was the Bombay High Court Chief Justice. Then he rendered the first judgment services applicable to redevelopments, to development agreements. That is where the meaning started. And thereafter, there are plethora of such things. Keraija is also there, LNP is also there. But today, it is government's firm philosophy that I will tax anything and everything which adds value. So in the context of redevelopment also, government is on the firm conviction that the developer introduces various raw material, 
cement, sand, labor, etc. And thereafter, he adds a lot of value and then he earns profit. So the purchase inputs are different than the sale product. So whether it is supply, that is manufacturing production or not, even though it is giving rise to immobile property, which cannot be subjected to TST, but I will tax it. So much so that uh, the council of the level of Mukul Rohanghi, recently I am forgetting Madras or Kerala, some South High Court, he lost the case on GST on development agreements. Today, Supreme Court is seized of the matter. There are three views. First view is GST can't apply to sale of development rights. Why? Because sale of development rights has no connection with the building. Existing building, building is meant for demolition. It is never being sold. What is being sold is the rights arising out of land. And you, if you refer the immobile property, <coughs> you have so many definitions of immobile property. General clauses at Lelo, registration at Lelo, so many laws, the, the definition is different. But by and large, if the land is immobile property, the rights arising from land are also immobile property. So by this theory, there is a good conviction amongst top lawyers that sale of development rights which is happening by society to a developer cannot be liable to GST. As against their government is from that will charge full GST. We believe that a moderate view will succeed because moderate view has far more logic. What is the logic? That in redevelopment developer is providing me services in the form of construction of my new houses. Is it a valid argument or not? Developer is constructing my house, I am an existing manor. Not as a developer, but he is providing me construction service. So GSC cannot be applied to the sale value of the flat. GSC should be applied to if I appoint a contractor or developer also appoints a contractor. How much he is charging? 4,000 to 5,000 per square foot. So their bill of the contractor should ultimately become subjectable to GST. The, because I move in the profession, I have remained a leader in the profession for at least one decade. So I know that this is the major driving force which is likely to prevail upon the force of law also. That yes, it will be taxable, but not at so much rate which is happening today, but at a very negligible value. In the meantime, where the problem is arising, developers are collecting these funds from you. After development agreement is signed, you are told many times that I will not pay you for first, I will not pay you half six. Why? You will be liable to. So, by chance you are, you know, because cases come in litigation to us at various stages. If you are settled in such position, then you should at least give a notice and that notice is far overriding. Whatsoever it does, once you give a notice, sir, you have collected this much money by your deduction from my purpose fund that is towards GST liability. If you have paid it, kindly give me the documentary evidence. He has not paid it. If you have kept it, then it is a deposit on account of possible liability on which interest you have to pay and give me complete account. So once such notice is served or once as a society you enter into this document, then money collected from you will stand in an escrow account. And if it is a negotiation, you can say that it should be kept in escrow account. One cannot lay down any firm proposition of negotiation. Why? Because negotiation is a matter of trade-off. How much you need, how much he needs the project, and your own reading about the developer's track record. 
Our trade record is that once we have done the project, that developer will never recommend our name to any other project. That agreement also he has never signed at different place. Because in that case, so for example, he found the society is firmly behind this document, so we have to sign. And he knew by signing this document also he is not losing, but he is losing, losing his manipulation powers all around this project. So, Documentation is Akbar Bhai also repeatedly said is the most important protector of your development. Unfortunately, most people get attracted by the good building plants. Nay plant they say. They should see Taj Mahal's plants also. These plants will become yours only by way of proper documentation. Otherwise, there are more case, cases again. Despite in the development agreement a clause that plans once approved by the society cannot be changed. After you vacate, it will go on changing and changing and changing. And if there is an activist, you may write to the BNC, how do you allow the changes in plans? BNC is more intelligent than the intelligence here. It does not reply you. Because it is advised, BNC is acting as an almost command under oral commands of the big stakeholder. Don't reply to him. Because he has gone to the wrong place. He should not be writing here. He is writing development agreement. So BNC is an interpreter of law. Tha. We have terminated development agreements irrevocable. When developer objected, we said you go to court. BNC can't protect you. We have terminated. So, what is happening is that such stereotype clauses are not really protected. Your clause will have to be ironclad so that your plans will not change.